Hi guys and welcome to my Death Nova Necro Guide. This is a build that is exclusive to Season 20 because of the season theme that allows you to cube any kind of cube power. And uh, in this case, this um, like this whole season theme buffs Necromancers a lot compared to most other classes. And we can uh, use three different weapons in the cube, giving you a lot of damage buffs that otherwise wasn't possible before. And this makes it so that Necro is actually the strongest class on season uh, with this build because um, we have the Blood Tide Blade. And Blood Tide Blade is um, like a hidden, uh, like really OP item, but it has never really been strong enough to actually define the meta. But this time it does. And uh, you get a big damage boost to Death Nova for each enemy that is nearby. And, uh, you know, potentially you can stack, you know, like 100 monsters in, in like a 25 yards radius, and you'll have like a 40,000% damage multiplier just from this one item alone. And combined with the other items, giving you like another, you know, like times three, times four, times seven damage buff or so, uh, the build is actually strong enough to just obliterate tier 150 now. But there's a caveat, and that is that um, you do rely on having pretty good rifts, you need a lot of density, and it's very hard to kill elites because of this blood type blade. It's simply because when you start nuking, you will immediately evaporate all the little trash and then you will not deal any damage anymore to the remaining elites. So um, it's it's like a really um, like sophisticated um, group interaction basically, where uh, you need to support to you know stack enough monsters for you. You need to uh, be careful of when to nuke because you actually want to deal damage to the elites as well, and so on. So there are some things um, to to be careful about when playing this build, but I'm gonna cover them as well. Also, I want to give a little shout out to my uh, fellow streamer and climate Rob. Uh, you might have seen his work on the PTR. He's done a lot of the, um, a lot of testing, especially with the Necromancer, and uh, this is also his footage. So a uh, big thank you to him. Okay, so let's go over the build. We have a, a LON setup or a, an LOD setup uh, with the Legacy of Dreams gem, and uh, otherwise we just stack like most of the typical items. We have a Lorax Crown, a Killer Keras, a Swarm Plant Waders for the poison damage. Uh, this whole build is like poison skills, basically you have six poison skills and um, yeah, you want to stack that as well. So yeah, like with shoulders, there's not really anything, so it doesn't matter. But um, here's the, the weapon and also like the, the three cube items. And uh, it's, it's really important that you, you use all of those. So you have the side of the cycle. Um, it makes it so that when bone armor is active, you deal more damage with your secondary skills. Um, we have the blood type blade, obviously, that I just mentioned. We have uh, Nair's Black Death, which um, increases your damage for each poison skill you use. And um, like this, you can use a full selection of uh, six poison skills. You don't have to do this. You could theoretically swap one out for something like Blood Rush. But um, yeah, this is like definitely the most DPS like this. And we have the Turgul's Corroded Fang, which gives you an additional damage boost against cursed enemies and also applies your uh, curses for you with uh, Grim Scythe. Yeah. So if you really want to use something like Blood Rush, um, you could uh, swap out something like uh, Bone Spikes or the, the Bone Spear and um, you know just have like a little bit of that, this damage. So removing one poison skill will increase your damage by something like 15% or so. Um, other than that, uh, we have Dainty's Binding, a uh, very important item because it gives you a lot of damage reduction, so you should definitely use this. And we have uh, Ancient Path and Defenders. Um, since uh, during your nuke, you want to have Squirt's uptime. Uh, you need to be a little bit careful to uh, not die immediately, or not, not lose the Squirt at least. Um, generally, you'll have a Monk keeping your, your Squirt up with uh, shields, but um, obviously not invincible. And uh, this helps a lot because you are actually stunning while nuking because of the uh, Bone Armor. Bone Armor has a two second stun when you use it, and you use it exactly before you nuke. And otherwise, you also have a barb usually stunning for you. If you have illusory boots, it just helps you move around. And uh, otherwise, you want to stack a little bit of resource cost reduction, something like the gem here. You don't need cooldown in this build, um, so you stack um, you know as much as you can, like a little bit on the shoulders, a little bit on the helm, and so on. And otherwise, you, you go big on area damage. Area damage is really the, the key here because um, we, when you nuke with um, Death Nova, um, you have so many targets in this little uh, area of effect, but uh, most of them will die on the first cast. And you want to get an area damage proc you know, to m move over to the elites, so you can actually have a chance of killing them. Yeah, other than that, we have Crisp and Sentence, uh, just a very, very strong um, ring for Necromancers, 
So you deal more damage against crowd control targets, and this bonus is doubled when they're like hard crowd control from stun. So obviously this is very nice because we already stun ourselves, and we also have the barb usually stunning, and we have convention of elements. Keep in mind, Necromancer has a 12 second uh, convention cycle, not 16 seconds like most other classes. Um, so uh, there's only three elements, and theoretically you can nuke you know, really, really fast. And um, most of the time you actually don't really utilize this, because in, in the Dream Rifts you want to make like one or two pulls only. So you open like a festering woods or a battlefields map, and um, you know you, you, do, you do have to wait until the pull is made. You can't just, you know, keep nuking every time unless, you know, you, you, you're already nuked and everything is like really low HP, then of course, you know, you just keep going. But um, when when you prepare like the first big pull, for example, uh, do not do not nuke randomly. Because of the blood type late, you really need all the small stuff. So um, keep that in mind. You have fast cycles, but the fast cycles are mainly useful to clean up, you know, the leftovers. Okay, for the skills, um, Death Nova, of course, um, with the Blight Rune, uh, it's the Poison skill. Uh, we have the Grim Scythe, um, the Cursed Scythe, um, uh, the Bone Armor, Dislocation. The Bone Armor makes it so that um, with the uh, Scythe of the Cycle, you, um, you, you, you can uh, deal more damage with your secondary skills. Keep in mind that a Bone Spear will actually use up one of these charges. So basically you have um, 10 charges. Uh, when you cast bone armor, so you can do 10 casts that get the damage boost, and you want to avoid using one for bone spear. So you want to use the bone spear and then the bone armor bef right before you nuke. And otherwise, you can you know, press command skeletons. Um, it doesn't even have an animation. You just press that for the nice black death buff, and uh, same with the bone spikes. So you just use everything once right before the nuke. And you know, like you, when you're not nuking, you can also just run around, uh, use the grim scythe a little bit. And um, yeah, doing like doing a convention, you pop the bone armor and then go ham with Death Nova. And uh, legendary gems, um, I mentioned the Legacy of Dreams. You have the main of the turret, of course, for damage boost, and we have Pain Enhancer. Um, the last gem is a little bit of a question mark still, so um, there are some options. Um, the, the other one would be Saze. So um, you know, you might just have so much damage and in um, that. You don't need to do so many casts, and you can only do like ten casts in total to you know not lose the damage buff from um, your bone armor. So what this means is that um, you might actually want to go with stays for the the extra burst on elites because you know as I said you do one cast and all the small stuff stuff dies, and then you do like two or three casts, and you know all the medium trash dies, and then there's literally only elites left. So um, getting as much area damage as possible on on the elites is really crucial. And I could actually see that Saze is being played. Saze has um, a special effect in the way that um, you do get the first bonus already at zero yards um, distance. So um, it scales up to 80% um, uh, damage increase over five steps. So each step is 16% uh, damage increase. So you do get 16% at least. And then like for targets that are 10 yards away, you get 32%. So it's not really a really good gem, but it's better than nothing. Another option would be Banner the Powerful or uh, actually Molten Wildebeest. And the reason for that is um, it, it applies um, shields very easily. So uh, with Molten Wildebeest you have the option to um, uh, basically um, be almost invincible because um, you have the secondary effect that after 4 seconds of not taking damage you get 200% of your life per, re per second as a shield. And uh, shields obviously protect your squirt's necklace pretty well. And there is one passive on the Necromancer, which is called Draw Life. And this um, gives you 10% increased life regeneration uh, for, uh, for each enemy uh, around you. So basically, you want to, uh, you want to stack you know, like in the middle of, of the pack, and uh, you will uh, get tons of life regeneration, and you can have like a million or more shield. And um, like this, uh, it might actually refresh shield as well, because you're not taking damage. So every four seconds you, you refresh this form, uh, just one or two million shield and you're almost invincible basically as long as you have enough damage reduction and so on and as long as the shield is not getting broken. So that's actually quite strong, especially early on when, uh, they're, you know, when they're relatively squishy and uh, since it's like a very high tier build you're basically immediately at, at like tier 140 plus with the build I guess. So um, yeah, this is, this is quite good because you might be too squishy to actually keep up the squirts. Yeah. Other than that, the other passive skills, uh, we have Spreading Malediction. 
Um, you have a 1% damage boost for each enemy uh, that is close to you and cursed. This is additive damage, but it doesn't seem to have a cap. So this is obviously very, very strong. Um, definitely take this. We have internal tournament. Um, this helps to keep the curses up. You don't um, uh, necessarily need this, but it's it's still really nice. If you radically can apply the curse yourself, you know, right before the nuke every time um, with the with the cursed scythe. But uh, generally, this is pretty useful. We have standalone for the 100% armor. Uh, this is very nice. It uh, also synergizes with your stone gauntlets. Um, keep in mind this build doesn't have a CC immunity itself. So as long as you don't have ignore pain from your barb, you will be slowed like hell. So um, make sure you flame your barb enough so he actually um, puts up ignore pain. And um, if, the, if the barb can't do it, or if you're actually running without a barb, then you probably have to swap this out. Or you might have to go with um, invigorating gemstone, um, for example, instead of pain of the trap, or instead of the um, pain enhancer, to give you CC immunity. So one of these options is necessary to make this work. And we have final service, so it's just a cheat death passive. Um, this is probably what you would swap out when um, you go for the Molten Visible setup with uh, Draw Life, um, because you really want the other passives. And the gameplay is uh, relatively simple, as I mentioned earlier. So you, um, you basically wait for your supports to make the pull. You can just run around, curse some stuff a little bit. And as I said, um, hold back on nuking too early. Um, it's quite tempting because you do so much damage, but um, remember you need to kill the elites if you want to have a good time or if you want to you know, clear the rift in time at all. And killing elites is very, very hard at this. Um, so basically you need a good map, you need a big pull, and then you have you know, like a, a short burst. You know, like only doing your convention when everything is set up, when the barb ground stomps, um, you know, to group stuff up and so on, you want to do like the, the big boom. And um, you might lag out a little bit, but it's only like for you know, one or two seconds or so be, be, until everything is dead, and then the legs disappear again. So it's not terrible. Um, just be careful a little bit about um, you know, not spamming too much uh, to, uh, to lag out. But generally, this is not a big issue, it's simply because the build has so much damage that everything dies right, quite fast. So um, this is just something to be aware of. But other than that, um, yeah, the, the play style is quite simple. Um, just, you know, walk around, just try to stay on the top of the sanctuary. You can do like one or two casts before you nuke to actually spawn an Oculus Ring. And then it will also show you about where to make the ground stomp and you can walk into an Oculus Ring and then you go ham for your convention. Just make sure you have all the buffs up. Uh, make sure you don't waste your bone armor. And um, other than that, it's it's pretty straightforward build. You know, walk around with the supports, um, go on the top of the sanctuaries, go into the um, Oculus Rings. And um, it's it's a pretty pretty easy to play build, I would say, simply because um, the supports do most of the work. So it's very strong. It's going to be the strongest build for season twenty, and um, uh, we will we will see insane clear times using this build because you know in a in a dream rift, you can do like one pull or two pulls and clear the rift, and then you have like a, a three minute clear or something. So we're gonna see some crazy stuff, and um, yeah, this is this is the build. So. Hope you liked the video and uh, see you guys next time.